So I'd like now to do a second example of a linear uh, inhomogeneous second order differential equation. The equation that we're working with is ay double prime plus by prime plus cy is equal to h of x. And I'm going to take an, as an example uh, a problem where uh, we get uh, complex roots from the auxiliary equation of the right hand side, of the left hand side. So let's take as an example uh, y double prime plus 4y prime plus 13y. So that, that's one uh, where we've, we've solved the homogeneous version of this problem uh, in another podcast. And we're going to write this uh, as the right hand side. We're going to take sine 3x. OK, so there's uh, our example. Uh, we go through uh, the two steps, as we've uh, talked about in uh, the previous podcast on uh, inhomogeneous problems. The first step is to solve the homogeneous version of this problem. So we set the uh, right-hand side to zero. We, we try y is e to the lambda x, and we get the auxiliary equation, lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 13 equals zero. We can uh, solve that auxiliary equation, uh, which gives you uh, lambda is minus 2 plus or minus 3i. And then, in, uh, so these are complex roots of the auxiliary equation. And so in the case of complex roots, we get our complementary function, which is e to the p times x. p is the real part of these complex numbers. So it is e to the minus 2x. And then we have c1 times uh, cosine 3x plus c2 times sine 3x, where that 3 is uh, the imaginary part of those two, uh, those two complex roots. So that's the complementary function for this, and that solves the equation y double prime plus 4y prime plus 13y equals 0. The second part is we look at the inhomogeneous uh, part of the equation on the right-hand side, this function h of x, and uh, we try to work out First of all, what kind of function it is. We try to work out a, the most general version of that function. And we try to uh, notice whether or not our function that we've got over here is in the complementary function here. So uh, the, the right-hand side over here is a trig function, sine 3x. Uh, and so the most general version of uh, sine 3x is going to be a trig function of the form of sines and cosines of 3x. So what we'll do is guess ypi to be uh, a cosine 3x plus b sine 3x as the most general trig function. So two things to, to notice. One is uh, we started over here with just a sine, but I've put in the sine and the cosine. In fact, I've put the cosine first. The order, of course, doesn't matter. But um, I've, I've put in both. And uh, you'll, you'll see as we work through it that uh, if, if we didn't include both, then we wouldn't be able to solve, uh, solve this problem. Uh, so you always, whenever you've got a trig function on the right-hand side, you always need to include both the sine and the cosine, regardless of whether this happens to be a sine or cosine, or, or perhaps there's a bit of both. The other thing to notice is, well, we have to ask this question, is this in the complementary function or not? Well, at first glance, it looks like, ah, it might be. Cosine 3x, there's a cosine 3x. Sine 3x, there's a sine 3x. So the, so the question we need to answer is, is there a choice of c1 and c2 that makes this complementary function equal to that? OK, so we could say, well, all right, well, how about choosing c1 equals 1, c2 equals 0? That will get the cosine 3x, but it doesn't come unaccompanied. It's also got this e to the minus 2x out front. So if you put c1 equals 0, and c, so c1 equals 1 and c2 equals 0, what you actually get as your complementary function is e to the minus 2x times cosine 3x. Now that is uh, not this function here. That is a, a different function, and therefore this cosine 3x is not in the complementary function. And we don't need to worry about multiplying uh, by x as we did in, in the previous example. So we can proceed directly with this. In that case, uh, what do we do? 
we need to find the values of a and b that make this work, that make this guess for our, our particular integral satisfy that equation. So, as we have done uh, previously, we differentiate it. We'll differentiate it twice, and we'll substitute it in. So, differentiating it the first time, cosine 3x, the derivative of that is minus 3. Uh, there's an a sine 3x plus 3b cosine 3x. And the second derivative is minus 9a cosine 3x minus 9b sine 3x. We substitute those in. So we've got y uh, double prime, so that is minus 9a uh, cosine 3x minus 9b sine 3x plus 4 times y prime. So y prime is minus 3a sine 3x plus 3b cosine 3x plus, what is it, 13 y's. So it's 13 times y, which is a uh, cosine 3x plus b sine 3x. And all of this is supposed to be equal to the right-hand side which is sine 3x. OK, so our job is to find a and b that makes this uh, true for all values of x. So let's collect it together the sines and the cosines. So how many cosine 3x's do we have? Well, we've got minus 9a of them here. We've got, uh, we've got some over here. We've got 12b of them there. there. And we've got... 13a of them over here. So it's uh, minus 9a plus 12b plus 13a cosine 3x. Uh, and how many sine x, how many sine 3x's do we have? We've got minus 9b of them over here. We've got uh, minus 3 times 4 times a of them over here. So that becomes minus 12a. And then we've got uh, 13b's. times sine 3x, and this is supposed to be equal to sine 3x. All right? So we've got uh, all of these cosine 3x's, and we've got all of these sine 3x's, and it's supposed to be equal to no cosine 3x's and one sine 3x. So this number here should be equal to 0, and this number here should be equal to 1 for the left-hand side to be exactly the same as the right-hand side. So uh, let's try and solve that pair of equations. Um, so our first equation is, uh, well, how many a's do we have? We've got 13 minus 9. So we've got 4 a's. And we've got uh, how many b's? There's 12 b's. And that's equal to 0. And now we've got uh, how many a's? We've got minus 12 a's. And we've got uh, 4 b's. And that's equal to 1. So we've got this pair of uh, linear equations to solve for a and b. All right, well, that's something we can do. Uh, There's a, a couple of ways you could do it. You could, uh, for example, rewrite that first equation, and you could say that, well, OK, a is equal to minus 3b. Right, bring the 12b to the other side. Uh, divide by 4, and you get a is minus 3b. Uh, and if you've got a is minus 3b, you can then put your a is minus 3b into this equation. So, it is, uh, so that gives you minus 12 times minus 3b uh, plus 4b is equal to 1. And how many is that? Well, OK, so minus 12 times minus 3 is uh, 36 b's. And we've got another 4 uh, b's there. And that's equal to 1. So that gives you b is equal to 1 over 40. And a is uh, minus 3b, so it is minus 3 over 40. So that's one way you could solve that equation, that pair of equations. Or if you wanted to, you could say, well, can we combine these in some way? Well, if I take that top equation and multiply it by 3, I'd get here 12a's and 36b's. And then if I now add them, the 12a's here and the 12, minus 12a's there cancel, and we'd end up with 36b's and 4b's is equal to 1, so you get the same answer that way as well. 
So now we've got those numbers. We get our ypi is a times cosine 3x, so it's minus 3 over 40 cosine 3x plus b times sine 3x, so it's plus 1 over 40 times sine 3x. Uh, so there we are. We've got our particular integral. The last step is to write down the general solution, which is the particular integral uh, plus the complementary function. Uh, before I do that, I'll just uh, mention that if we, hadn't, if we hadn't put both the sine and the cosine in our guess for the particular integral, supposing we just put the sine in, so we didn't have those a's, what we'd end up with here is effectively we'd have chosen in advance a equals 0. And in order to uh, make this guess work, we would have to solve this pair of equations, but without the a. So the first equation would read 12b equals 0, so b is 0. And the second equation would read 4b equals 1, so b is a quarter, which is a contradiction. So if you're solving these problems and you end up with a pair of linear equations uh, or that you can't solve uh, because, well, they give you contradictory answers, uh, then chances are you've uh, left something out of your guess for the particular integral. Uh, possibly you should have had both the sine and the cosine. So returning to the final step, uh, we have our particular integral. Uh, we have our complementary function, so we get our general solution. which is y is y pi plus y cf, um, which is, so it's minus 3 fortieths cosine 3x plus a fortieth sine 3x plus e to the minus 2x times c1 cosine 3x plus c2 sine 3x. Um, I haven't left myself quite enough space on the bottom of the board to write it all out, but uh, you can see what it is from that plus that. Now, of course, uh, in this problem, uh, we haven't been given any uh, initial conditions or boundary conditions. If we had, so supposing we'd been given, say, y at x equals 0 is equal to 1, and y prime at x equals 0 equals 0, some information like that, we could uh, use that information to find the values of c1 and c2. So that just emphasizes the different roles that these, these constants play. The a and the b here in the particular integral we, those are numbers that we have to find to make our guess for the particular integral solve the equation that we've been given. These arbitrary constants C1 and C2 are arbitrary. If we have no initial condition or boundary condition, then any value of C1 and C2 will work. And in general, they should be left into the solution. But if we're given information like an initial condition, then that will be used to determine what C1 and C2 are. Thank you very much.